Hi and welcome back to my YouTube channel, The Life of a Writer. And on today's video, I'm going to be giving you an update on the soon-to-be English library, the transitioning of that room from my 20-year-long Spanish classroom into an English library reflective of what I'm doing now in my creative work life. And uh, you know, I'm going to take you down into the classroom and give you a tour of, of where I'm at with that. But before I begin, I wanted to give you a little bit of a talk or my thoughts on style. And what is my style when it comes to developing that room? So when I think of my style for the last 25 years, I don't actually feel that I have had uh, an individual unique style. I have been in mom mode. And so if you ask me what my style would be, I'm thinking, well, running shoes all over the entrance, uh, sports equipment, uh, piles of homework, uh, backpacks. Um, basically, it has been this operational raising children style and I haven't really taken a lot of time to think about what my preferences are when it comes to aesthetic and as such my home um, our home uh, reflects that I will say however because I have a lot of furniture in the house from my ancestors my English ancestors there definitely is that antique Victorian vibe to the home just by way of having that furniture in my house. So in the past months, as I've been watching YouTube and trying to figure out what my style is when it comes to designing the interior of this new English library, I've come up with three styles that make sense to me. And I thought that I would, I would say it makes sense to me. They're relevant to me. And I thought that I would give you a very, very brief overview of these three, three styles and, and just tell you how I feel that they fit with what I'm trying to do um, and where I differ and how that's going to come into play when it comes to designing the, uh, the library. So the first of those styles is called Dark Academia. And Dark Academia, academia is a style which is a little bit Harry Potter-ish, think old world English library, very dark walls, dark greens, jewel tones, old books, uh, candlelight, lots of things, old things collected on journeys, um, a little bit of a gothic vibe to it. What's interesting about this style is that it has worked its way into my serial novel, The Girl on Harlow Street, without me even knowing what it was. When I was writing that novel, I was listening a lot to dark academia music, not realizing that that was also an aesthetic when it came to decor. And the main household or the main house building in The Girl on Harlow Street definitely fits the dark academia vibe. Another style or aesthetic that I'm drawn to is called Romantic Academia. And this is more in the Regency period. If you think of um, shows like Bridgerton, uh, the author Jane Austen, those would be very fitting of, of this particular style. So more romantic, flowers, nature, when I think of this particular um, aesthetic, it's paler colors, so pastels and sepia and uh, roses and tea and things like that. And I think that um, I'm also drawn to that as well. And that also works its way into The Girl on Harlow Street to a lesser degree with the aesthetic. You can see the aesthetic in one of my characters, Lady em Emmeline, with the way that she dresses and carries herself, but very much in the ideas from this that are sort of attached to this aesthetic. So a love of nature, um, uh, rebelling, not, not conforming with the social mores of society. So those definitely are themes that 
work their way into my novel. So I think, yes, it would make sense that I'm also drawn to the romantic academia style. And you can see little touches of that uh, in, in our house. And then the third aesthetic that I'm drawn to is something called cottage core. And this is an aesthetic which really celebrates the rustic, um, old fashioned little cottage. When I think of cottage core, I'm thinking of whimsical uh, little knickknacks and um, again, lots of plants, lots of nature, uh, wicker, uh, copper, um, old, uh, you know, antique, rustic pieces of kitchen equipment that, you know, have been passed down through the years. And I'm also very drawn to that. And interestingly enough, that is also very heavily in the girl on Harlow Street in another building uh, called Foxglove, my cottage uh, in the story. And I'm also really drawn to that. So these are the three styles that I'm drawn to as I try to figure out, well, what is my style <laughs> other than, you know, the sort of being in mumland style. And I, oh my goodness, what else do I want to say about these three styles? I have to say that while each of them are, are in my serial novel, in my off-page life here at the house, I have touches of these things. And when it comes to looking at how I want to design this room, I can't see myself being all in with one of these designs. So in and of themselves, they're all a bit much. So to go purely dark academia with very dark walls, and I think I would find that a little bit suffocating, but to go all into the romantic things with flowers and teapots and things like that, that's a little bit too much, a little bit too much prettiness uh, for me. And then the cottage vibe, which I really like, doesn't accommodate that sort of intellectual dark uh, side that, that, that I'm really drawn to. So moving forward with this room, I believe that you're going to see an amalgamation of the three styles and I'm not sure how that's all going to manifest yet when I take you on a tour in a moment after the talking part of this video you'll be able to see the beginnings of some of these three aesthetics that are going to come into play so there you go what is my style? I actually don't know yet, but I think it's an amalgamation of dark academia, romantic academia, and cottage core. It's an amalgamation of all three. So without further ado, I'm going to take you down into the classroom. I'm still calling it a classroom. That's very hardwired into my vocabulary and show you how it's beginning to transition into a library. I also want to preface this by telling you that in this video, in this tour of the room, I do give you the lovely story behind my Victorian writing desk. And I also end the tour by, well, by giving you some thoughts on a little surprise twist that I want to do with this channel with regards to the food. So I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Okay, so I'm downstairs now and I'm going to take you into the classroom one day soon to be English library to show you how it's coming along and hopefully to point out a few of the things that line up with the three styles that I was talking about in the first part of this video. So we have worked quite a lot on this room. It is a far cry from the mess that it was. So again, we have the hutch and the dining room table, formerly the classroom table, moved to the back of the room with the coffee station in the corner there. And then the piano is where it was. 
and we moved a large bookshelf in from the other room. We have to be fairly frugal with this room and so what we're trying to do is use furniture that we already have. So you've got the large book case there which matches the wood and then we have the green velvet couch or sofa and I had some non-negotiables for this room and green velvet furniture or a green velvet place to sit was definitely one of those non-negotiables and then I, I purchased a, a wooden tea trolley however I'm feeling it's a little bit too rustic for the the vibe that I'm going for in this half of the room so yeah so anyway taking you around again the bookshelf still not filled with all my books I do have a few books that I wanted to point out one I just bought yesterday called how to cook the Victorian way the other one if you can see it it's that pale blue book there it's tea with Jane Austen Austin with recipes um, you know pertaining to her and then the other one is up here it's called Mrs. Beaton's Book of Household Management and I did use that. It's a Victorian housekeeping book and I did use that when I was working on the girl on Harlow Street. So coming around we have great great grandfather's umbrella and walking stick. I'm going to talk about him a little bit later and then we have that set of drawers in the corner. I brought a little plum colored stool from another room in the house and put it there because it fits with the color scheme that I want to go for. In this room, Francisco has now bolted the electric fireplace to the wall. We still have to get a fire guard for it. And then I have a few books here and uh, some rose petals from my book launch and from a bouquet that my three children gave me for my birthday. And then coming here, uh, the desk. And I'm gonna tell the story of the desk in a moment. Just moving around here. And again, I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do with this corner here, whether I'm going to put a cabinet in there. I do have a cabinet that is part of my set upstairs. And I've thought about bringing that down. The thing that's keeping me from doing that is that the lighting in this room is not good for making videos and where I have my setup upstairs opposite a window, it is the perfect place to be filming videos. So I still have to think about whether I'm going to bring that piece of furniture down. It does fit with the, with the vibe that I'm going for. I am trying to find green velvet accents for the rest of the room. So I have bought a green velvet a seat cushion uh, for the desk and I've also thought about putting a chair in the corner there, like a reading chair. Hopefully, I don't know, I'll decide what I'm going to do with that corner uh, later. And then this cabinet again was in the other part of the house and uh, along with that bookshelf and, and Francisco has bolted it to the wall here. And in there I have my girl on Harlow Street papers and crafting supplies and we will definitely be going through that uh, later. So that is the main part of the room so far. Still lots to be done, but it is uh, coming along. Moving to the back of the room, uh, here is where I hope to have a kitchen area. I want to create a set where I can cook and film myself cooking for these videos. Now I'm not so sure about bringing an oven down here, I can definitely fit a fridge and the situation with our kitchen upstairs, it, it, it is a galley kitchen so it's very long and narrow and a very difficult place for me to film myself cooking, which is why in the two videos I have shared a little bit of cooking, you're just seeing my hands, you know, I've used a tripod just to, to film my hands cooking. But in order to cook fully on camera, I really do need a space like this. So that's the idea. Um, and 
yeah, I mean, I don't know how it's going to work out. It's going to take a while and also that part of the room is still quite messy. I have to move the bookshelf behind the door there, uh, definitely clean up that uh, hutch or that sideboard and, you know, make this space appropriate for cooking. But this is the area where I can bring in a little more of that cottage country kitchen vibe, which I really, really love. So with the copper uh, pans and a more rustic, uh, rustic feel to it. So I'm hoping to bring that cottage core vibe into th that part of the room and then to keep more of the dark academia in this part of the room. Actually, the blue blanket is going to move. That was for the uh, cats. And then there are elements of the romantic academia I like. And I'm just looking at this little thing, these sort of little, I guess we could call them little knickknacks from my grandmother. And, you know, the coming around here, the rose petals. So there, there are certain things from that romantic aesthetic that I quite like. But yeah, so I'm just looking at this thinking, yes, you'll have the three styles coming together, the, the dark academia, the romantic academia, and then in the kitchen area at the back, a more rustic uh, cottage core vibe. At this time, I wanted to say that, I don't know whether this is a surprise, but one of the things that I would love to do is to take Victorian recipes and make them plant-based. Now that is a little bit of an oxymoron to bring the poetry into cooking because Victorian and plant-based diet, especially for the more middle class and upper class Victorians, would be an oxymoron. That said, however, um, the Victorians did eat a fairly healthy diet and my great-great-grandfather George was a greengrocer. He was a self-made man, you could say, and he made his living and developed a fairly lucrative career in the greengrocer industry. So he worked with vegetables. So I will probably put a little nod to him in this corner of the room. And finally, I did say that I would tell you the story of the desk, my Victorian desk, because it has a fairly lovely story to it. So where do I begin? I was working on a novel quite a few years ago, and this novel was agented by a fairly renowned literary agent and I won't share his name because I haven't asked permission to share his name. And this literary agent worked with me as a mentor first, and I really consider him to be the writing mentor of my life. He was the greatest writing teacher that I have ever had, and he will remain so until the day I die. I am forever indebted to the guidance that this gentleman uh, professional gave me. However, while I was in this process, some extenuating circumstances came up in my family life and I really felt the need to pull back from that dream, from that project to do what I considered to be and what I truly believe to be my parental obligations. And I didn't pull back instantly. It happened over time, but as things got more demanding at home, I began to pull back slowly. And, you know, I was expressing this to the agent um, and of course to, to my husband, Francisco. And Francisco, while he completely understood, he in his core, he didn't want me to give up the writing and he did two things for me to encourage me to keep going. And the first thing that he did was he printed a list off the computer and he put it at my place at the breakfast table 
And when I came down, I found the list and it's like, well, what's this? And he said, well, it's a list of the writers uh, that are represented uh, by the agency that you're with. And he said, you need to take a good long look at that list. Now, I had never looked at a list. I've never really been one to to consider or to think about being in a renowned group of people. I just, I've always just been doing my thing. However, I did look at the list and I was really surprised because the list did contain, you know, really, really prolific, great writers and political figures and, and people who were extremely important in Canadian history and different facets of Canadian history. And it was a, a little bit, uh, I, w I was taken aback to see my name in that list. And Francisco was saying, look, Rosemary, I know that you're thinking of pulling back, but you need to keep writing. <laughs> you know, you've made it to this list. You need to keep writing. And I, uh, well, you know, I mean, I was really appreciative of, of Francisco's support in that way. The other thing that he did is he bought me this desk. Now, Francisco's not one to get a lot of gifts. He doesn't, he's not big on Christmas or birthdays, but he does buy the occasional gift and it has a lot of meaning to it. And he bought me this desk for the same reason that he printed that list out to encourage me to keep writing. And as with the list, I was really appreciative of the gift, but I decided not to keep writing, but to put all of my energy into my family. In hindsight, this was a choice and I believe it was the only choice, so therefore maybe not a choice. And I am so, so grateful that I made that choice because there are no words <laughs> to convey how fulfilled I am with the results of that choice. However, I have come back to the dream and I think that it's time to move that desk that Francisco gave me into a place of prominence and actually use it to write because I wasn't using it to, to write. It was at, on the back wall, uh, my main focus was teaching, still the family. Uh, even working on the girl on Harlow Street, I wasn't working at this desk. I was, you know, working at the table that was in the middle of the room, surrounded by the mess from my Spanish classes and a cumulative mess from throughout the years. So that is the story of the desk. Um, Francisco is a fairly private person and in fact for a very long time he didn't even want me to mention him but I think now that I'm in this new phase of my creativity and I'm sharing the poems on LinkedIn he's more comfortable with me opening up a little bit on that and so this desk was given in utmost uh, support of me uh, following my dream. And now here it is uh, in a more prominent place in the room. So again, I will be ever grateful uh, to my husband uh, for, for the support that he's given uh, my writing. Mm -hmm.